Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Cryptocurrency markets have given the appearance in particular over the last couple days of just completely falling apart, but truthfully, that's happened roughly 11 billion times. Uh, cryptocurrency asset class is not going away, but Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse shared some thoughts on this, and I thought you might appreciate that, along with some facts, because XRP, look, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it continues to be useful, it ain't going away ever. If it's solving real problems for real people, then XRP is here to stay. And if that ever changes and it's no longer being sufficiently utilized, maybe it goes away. But I have no reason to think that would happen in a world where it's being adopted. In fact, in Q2 of this year, Brad Garlinghouse has now publicly stated, literally just yesterday, that um, XRP is being used in on-demand liquidity to the, the tune of over $1 billion dollars in Q2 this year so far. And, and, the, and the quarter's not, not even over yet. Over $1 billion. As far as I'm concerned, XRP is here to stay. And until I have some sort of evidence to the contrary, I say XRP is here to stay. That's what I personally believe. Um, and also take a look at this article from the Wall Street Journal. It's, it's an opinion piece. It's titled, Who Pays for Crypto's Collapse? And this is written by a gentleman named Andy Kessler. And it seems to me that um, he might be, I don't know, he's, he seemed to be somewhat pro-Bitcoin, but not a fan of pretty much any other cryptocurrency on the planet. Well, as it turns out, he tweeted something that I can't see anymore because it's since been deleted. But um, attorney John Deaton responded to whatever that tweet was with a monstrous and powerful thread uh, defending the position of the XRP community at large. And I think that's why uh, Mr. Kessler deleted whatever his tweet was. And even attorney Hogan made a tweet where he was kind of joking about it as a result. Very interesting stuff. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say. All right. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so as the world was completely falling apart yesterday, Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, shared some timely thoughts, and I think you're going to appreciate this. He said the following, Days like today are never what you hope to see, especially in an industry with as much incredible talent as crypto. If you recently joined the industry and haven't seen a downturn like this, know that this too shall pass. Advice from someone who's seen a few downturns over the years. Uh, yeah, and so I'll point out that this is true. I jumped in at the weirdest time for those of you that might be new to the channel. I, I jumped into crypto in November of 2017, weeks before the biggest altcoin season in history, in the entire history of the asset class. It was a weird time to jump in and it was fun. And then we had a few years of a bear market. So that's most of what I've known is in you know participating in crypto. It has been a bear market, honestly. But but he's right. No, the, these things are cyclical. And uh, at some point, it, undeniably true, that at some point in the future, we're going to have a euphoric market again where people just can't get their money pumped into uh, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency exchanges soon enough. But anyway, Brad continues. It's never easy, but there are a few key reasons why Ripple has weathered the cyclical bear markets, as we will do here and continue growing. Number one, having an experienced executive team that has been through the dot-com bubble, the 2008 financial crisis, 2018 crypto winter, and more. Number two, focusing on the long term. Ripple has been building enterprise products with long-term utility, not speculation. These are products that solve problems today, not ones in search of a problem. FYI, Q2 on-demand liquidity volume, well over $1 billion, already surpassed its target three weeks before end of quarter. Whew, don't mind seeing that. It's, it's, that's why it's so fascinating to see this. Like, you see the price of, of um, XRP go down, clearly not in, in any way tethered to the, the happenings of Ripple, but it is interesting to see that as Ripple, the company, continues to get stronger and XRP is adopted further for the use case as a bridge currency, uh, it, it, the price, I mean, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it's so amazing. That's why I've said so many times, too, and this is really important uh, to understand. It's, it's not the case that because uh, Ripple seeking to solve a problem, the nature of which is so gigantic that the price of XRP must be astronomically large. No, no, no. It's, more, it's the exact opposite. It's that if 
the price of XRP is astronomically large and it has a sufficient br blend of price and liquidity, then it can solve uh, this, this problem, you know, of, of converting from one fiat currency to another via on-demand liquidity in corridors where it's, so it's, where it's operating. So as long as there's a sufficient blend of, of liquidity and price, then yeah, it, it'll, it'll just keep growing. But um, just because that, that just because a sufficient blend would make it possible for Ripple to do what they're doing and on a larger scale, that, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Um, still, I, I do think as you uh, continue to see maturation within this asset class, as more mature minds come into the space, a little bit more even keeled than what you've seen for most of the existence of crypto at this point, uh, people are going to be putting money only where real problems are being solved. It's the same thing that happened during the dot-com boom and bust a couple decades ago. There was one bubble, it inflated, uh, it, and then it, it popped, and then what happened? Well, a bunch of those companies ceased to exist, but there were good companies where business metrics were actually getting better, adoption was taking place, and money did end up flowing back into those stocks. And so I think people will recognize and parse the differences between cryptocurrencies sufficiently in the future. We're just not there yet. Anyway, Brad continues. Point number three, operating with transparency. As a holder of XRP, we believe communication and transparency, including our quarterly markets reports, are key to being a responsible stakeholder. We've been asking for regulatory clarity for years and been upfront about what is slash isn't working. And number four, paying attention. What's happening now is not a small market gyration. We've been preparing for this with a significant cash balance and thus can afford to keep hiring the best talent with the goal of 50% outside the United States. Yeah, so worth noting, in case you hadn't heard this, Brad Garland House announced about, I think it was about half a year ago, if, memory, if my brain's not broken here, that they at that time had $1 billion with a B in the bank. So they're ready to weather the storm and uh, there are certain other firms that weren't necessarily quite as prepared, and that's unfortunate. There's been a lot of layoffs within the industry. But as Brad said in his first tweet, this too shall pass. And then he wrapped up by stating, the market is likely going to shrink in the near term, but I and many others have every ounce of confidence that crypto will succeed in the future as an integral part of our global financial systems. Slow and steady wins the race. I thought that was a good thread, so I wanted to share it with you. And um, an attorney, Deaton, um, retweeted that, yeah, the, 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 specifically the, the tweet sharing the information that, um, you know, Ripple's hiring right now. And uh, he wrote the following. I do see why Ripple is disliked by many of the industry players. BlockFi is laying off 20% of its employees. Coinbase is laying off 18% of its employees. Ripple plans to hire 300 people in the next 12 to 18 months while spending $100 million in legal fees while fighting an SEC lawsuit. <laughs> That's pretty wild when you, when you put it in the, uh, you know, frame it with that type of perspective. And for those of you who hadn't heard what he is referencing at the end of that tweet, that $100 million is Brad Garlinghouse publicly stated at an event. I made a whole video about this, actually. But he publicly stated at an event just a few days ago that they're anticipating, Ripple's anticipating that by the end of this lawsuit, they will have spent fully a one, uh, $100 million in legal fees. So if there's a settlement, presumably it could be potentially as much as half of that uh, because a, a huge amount of the expense will, <laughs> will be endured uh, once the trial actually starts and we're not there yet. So hopefully it'll end up being less of that, but only if there's settlement. It's just absurd the amount of money that, that goes into this, though, but that's, that's what's going on, man. All right, so now into, <laughs> into this next topic, which is endlessly interesting to me. It's just so fun when people write... Uh, in, in mainstream media, and they share these the, the, their opinions, and they're entitled, that's fine, but when they share their opinions and they seem so confident and they word things so strongly, but they actually don't know what they're talking about, it's just adorable, isn't it? So anyway, nothing against this guy personally, but um, he, again, this his opinion piece here in the Wall Street Journal was, who pays for crypto's collapse? Now, I'm going to share with you um, just... A few sentences out of this whole thing. I don't want to cover this thing. It's not necessary for me to get the point across. But then I'm going to share with you um, a comment from attorney Jeremy Hogan and then a bunch of comments from attorney John Deaton tearing this entire concept to shreds effectively. And attorney Deaton was being nothing but polite, but still he deserves to respond when, um, when somebody says nonsense like this. So there's this little here. I'll just highlight it for those of you that are looking at your screen right now. There's this section right how from the Wall Street Journal opinion piece 
by Andy Kessler, which re reads as follows. So is Ethereum or XRP or Luna an unregistered security? Unlike Bitcoin, which is a decentralized dream, <laughs> oh God. the others are the works of known enterprises that pitch the use of their products for payments and smart contracts. So pause right there. <laughs> I think it's hilarious he called Bitcoin a, a decentralized dream. Is, is, is that a little over the top? My gosh, somebody's got a crush on Bitcoin here. My so, so the only reason, if Bitcoin's not going to be declared to be a security by the SEC, the, presumably uh, the only reason or a, a primary reason is because they don't know who made it. They don't know who to sue, right? <laughs> so be, because there are transparent uh, projects out there and, and known creators of other various cryptocurrencies, it's okay to attack those, but not the ones that hide in the shadows. Is that the argument that's being made there? Sounds like it. Anyway, he then wrote, and this is the most ridiculous part of what he wrote. He said, XRP claims, quote, our proven technology and global network enable remittances, small to medium enter enterprise payments, disbursements, and treasury flows, end quote. It charges fees to enable these services. My sense is that XRP's value is derived from enterprise profits resulting from the work of others. Howie wowie. And he wrote that. that that's not, not me just kind of mocking what he wrote. He did it. That's what it sounds like in my head when I read it. Howie wow. So a couple things here. He said XRP claims and then provided a quote. XRP is not a sentient being, so I am 100% certain that XRP did not claim anything. Presumably he's re referencing Ripple the company, but if he can't even distinguish between a decentralized cryptocurrency and a company, I don't really think that he should probably be writing articles about anything crypto related. Howie wowie. So um, there was this thread, and uh, I'm going to dig into it in just one moment here. Um, you can see there's this deleted tweet, and then there's just a bunch of stuff from Attorney John Deaton. Um, the, the presumption is that this is Andy Kessler because he ends up citing... Um, Specifics. Uh, there's a, a, a word to use the word sense here. We're starting uh, in his thread, and that is exactly what we saw in the Wall Street Journal piece. So I think that uh, maybe uh, Andy Kessler, when when some attention was drawn to whatever it is that he tweeted about Ripple and XRP here, which is now deleted, uh, looks like he didn't really care for some honest feedback, and it was then deleted. Now Attorney Jeremy Hogan noticed this, and he wrote the following. Attorney Deaton tore apart the argument that XRP is a security so hard that the original tweet he was responding to has been erased from existence. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Uh, and so anyway, here's what Attorney Deaton had to say to this tweet, which is no more. I've also been granted Amici Curiae status on behalf of XRP holders by Judge Torres in the SEC vs. Ripple case. Respectfully... What forms the basis or foundation underlying your, quote, sense that XRP holders are relying on the efforts of Ripple? For example, are you aware the majority of first-time purchasers of XRP were completely unaware of a company called Ripple and its use of XRP? It is quite difficult to rely on the promises and the efforts of a company you are completely unaware exists. Don't you agree? Are you aware that there has been no evidence whatsoever offered establishing any price correlation, i.e. price appreciation, with public announcements by Ripple regarding the partnerships they've garnered utilizing XRP? Are you aware of the decentralized nature of the XRP ledger? Are you aware that Ripple controls less than 4% of the validators on the XRP ledger? Are you aware Ripple recommended a change on the XRP ledger and it was initially vetoed by the validators? Are you aware that it takes 80% consensus to approve a change or modification on the XRP ledger? Are you aware if 80% consensus is reached by validators, the XRP tokens owned by Ripple can be burned? <gasps> yeah, folks, and for those of you not in the know, that is true. Uh, if the validators vote, they can choose to burn Ripple's holdings. That's why, like, if Ripple becomes a bad faith actor in the space, they go to have a bad time because I don't think the decentralized community is willing to put up with that. But uh, Ripple's been the greatest cheerleader for XRP. And so and obviously as a result, the community has been nothing but supportive, right? But it, but it is true. Um, Ripple could do nothing about that. And then attorney Deaton says, 
Are you aware of the dozens, if not hundreds, of other developers or companies incorporating XRP and the XRP ledger into an application? Are you aware that Japan, Singapore, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, the United Arab Emirates, and others have declared XRP a non-security token? Are you aware that the SEC suddenly claimed XRP is a security after allowing it to trade for seven and a half years in the United States? Are you aware that XRP was the first regulated cryptocurrency in the United States when FinCEN and the Department of Justice classified it as a convertible virtual currency in 2015 and forced Ripple to comply with the banking laws of the United States and not the securities laws? Do you know that? Are you aware of the non-investment acquisition and use of XRP by thousands of XRP holders, which removes the token out of an Howey analysis? Are you aware that people use XRP as a substitute for fiat currency? Aware people are paid in XRP? Aware of XRP debit cards? Aware that XRP holders derive a direct financial benefit from the token itself when they collateralize their XRP for fiat loans or stake XRP for interest payments from entities or platforms independent of Ripple, which results in a resounding no howie wowie? <laughs> You've got to love that. The howie wow, howie howie. And then John continues. Aware that former CFTC chairman Giancarlo co-authored an analysis concluding XRP is not a security? Finally, are you aware of the massive conflicts of interest and gross appearances of impropriety regarding the circumstances surrounding how the lawsuit against Ripple and XRP was filed? Uh, then he points to a thread that he, um, I actually shared it on the channel before, so I won't be in this video. Excellent thread, though, dating back to um, October 10th, 2021. And it was the facts surrounding XRP and what's happening with Clayton and him and all that jazz. Um, he just said, look, these are the facts and they are not in dispute. And they said, before you read my thread, if you do, you should be aware that former SEC chairman Joseph Grunfest authored a letter pleading with the SEC and Chairman Clayton not to file the lawsuit, considering no fraud was alleged and no exigency existed. It traded for seven and a half years. Grenfest himself questioned the motive behind the lawsuit, stating is called into question the SEC's discretion. He also observed the mass exodus of senior people leaving the SEC whom supported bringing the case. It was filed as they were all walking out the SEC's door forever. But don't take my word for it. Read the Grunfest letter for yourself. And then he links to it. Grunfest's concerns over motive was appropriate. We have learned that Hinman and Clayton likely violated conflict laws. In fact, Hinman was warned by the SEC Ethics Office that he could be in violation of criminal conflict laws. He ignored the SEC's ethics warnings. Andy, I ask these questions respectfully because, as you know, a lot is at stake for millions of retail investors, users and holders of XRP, and other digital assets. The SEC violated its own guidance in 76 years of legal precedent by arguing XRP, the token itself, is a security. As you know, any commodity or asset can be packaged, marketed, offered and sold as an investment contract, a.k.a. a security. So why did they file this case? If you do a follow-up piece to your article, you will learn why. I'd be happy to provide you with the objective evidence. Exactly. Excellent thread from Attorney Deaton there. So look, again, people are entitled to their opinions, but as you go through this thread here, as I just did, I shared this with you, it becomes that much more clear that what Andy Kessler, the author of this opinion piece, stated um, it was stated without any sort of reasonable due diligence. I don't know how you come to that conclusion if you spent more than 30 seconds researching this thing. And that is not a personal attack on him. That's me pushing him back against his howie wowie idea because it just don't make no damn sense to Moon Lambo. Just saying. <laughs> uh, it's a good time here every time. 
that about channel. But I'll wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.